Something a little different for the channel. Normally on a Sunday, me and Marcus meet up. We go out for a nice fried breakfast we and do. discuss the state of the electrical industry. Yeah. But we thought we'd video this one, but we're not in the CAF because obviously we couldn't take the camera in with us. Yeah. You've had a real busy week, the ICRs, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I've had, I've had numerous ICRs this week, um, which we're going to go through and look at some of the challenges I've faced, um, some of the bits I've had to deal with with them, some, some normal that most people will see on a day-to-day -day basis doing the ICRs, some not so, so... Okay, just to clarify, yeah. electrical installation condition reports. Yes. So this is wiring mm. installations that have already been, say, installed, yeah. and you're just going back and giving them a health check, aren't you? Yeah, Checking exactly. Yeah, just we're just making sure that they're satisfactory to continue to be in service. Not, not we're not turning them on for the first time. We're just making sure they're safe to continue in service. And these EICRs. As you notice, I'm not wearing gloves this time, so I can't make that mistake. Guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So check that one out. It was with the water leak. That was really yeah, good. Yeah. Nice insight into the uh, the percentage of being tested, the areas which are being tested. And we'll leave yeah. a link to that video in the description below yeah. where there was a massive water leak into the electrical system. Yeah. Really interesting. Now, to start with, you said there about the, the servicing of in servicing, well, actually the installation's yeah. been installed, but actually you did a little bit of an EICR after a first fix on a set of flats that you picked up, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, so basically um, someone I do work for, they picked up some flats which are undergoing refurbishment. Right. Um, so one of the flats has been first fixed. Um, so I obviously, before I went to the quotation process, I went and had a look. Um, we knew there was some EICRs to do on some existing tenanted flats. Yeah. Um, and this one in particular wasn't tenanted, it was in the first fix stage. Um, straight away, luckily it wasn't plastered, so part of taking on a job is always that worry is, if it's been first fixed, I'm signing off that certificate and someone's done it. But that's what a multi-signature certification is for, where that the original electricians can now sign the construction side of it. Yeah, it just happened. I went in there, hadn't been skimmed yet, um, so I could actually see some of the, the cable runs and the zones and stuff, where, which in terms of all of that was absolutely fine. The only issue I did pick up, though, was actually that they've had clearly had some issues of damp in this flat. Um, so what the original builder's done is is used polystyrene, which is can be common um, to to lay up against the the brickwork to try and reduce the damp coming into the property. And the electricians actually just run and first fix the cable straight into that polystyrene into the boxes for the it was, it was just a radial socket circuit that was affecting so okay so so we've got now this uh, pvc twin yeah. cpc cable laying against polystyrene yeah. which is like a membrane to stop this damp issue it is yeah and you've seen very quickly that there is a reaction between the two and we talk about this in college don't we reaction between polystyrene yeah and pvc yeah how long had the warring system been in? So probably looking at it and speaking to obviously the builder about six to eight weeks. So so what you can see before, and this obviously there was no power to this circuit, there was no current flowing as such. And as you can see in the pictures now, you can actually see the chemical reaction that's taken place without anything going through the circuit. So, um, and that's with fresh air coming onto one side as well. So it's not deeply embedded into it. Um, you can see the reaction it's having. So, and it sort of brings me to the on-site guide, page 149, where it talks about you must not put these cables against um, polystyrene. So due to this chemical reaction. Yeah, and the one we're used to is that polystyrene beads, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah, when yeah people the are cavity some, wall yeah. insulation. Even though yeah. maybe you're not meant to put cables in cavity walls, no. but okay, <laughs> there's that reaction in those places yeah. as well. So yeah, so that's caused you an issue. And, and imagine you hadn't, you'd picked it up, as in you picked the wiring system up to do the second fix, thinking, ah, oh, it's already been wired, yeah. all the grunt's been done. Yeah. Actually, if you've signed all elements of that certificate and there would be an issue maybe in the future, that's yeah. be your problem. Yeah, of course it is, yeah. So luckily I've seen it at that stage and I, I said to um, who I deal with, that's something I'm going to have to change. So but luckily it was actually only a radial socket circuit, right. okay, um, that was feeding just this room and this area where the polystyrene had been put in place. So it was quite an easy sort of change for me just to have to rewire it. And the builder actually, they've taken the polystyrene off completely um, because they want to they wanna target the damp in a different way right. and get a damp expert into... Damp expert, yeah. imagine that. My yeah. job title is I'm a damp expert. <laughs> okay, so with that in mind then, so you've got this radial socket circuit, the polystyrene's been removed. Yeah. Is there any things that you do about the cables that are going up to these accessories? Yeah, so what you can do, you can run some sort of conduit system. Um, it's important we change our reference method for that on our certification when we do it. Um, it's quite a common practice now, isn't it? People use a lot of oval conduit to drop down to um, sockets and switches. Um, it's just important we change that on our certification. Yeah, I'm so used to ticking clip direct yeah, because yeah, we've gone course, obviously yeah. onto the building 
filled in yep. before it got plastered. So using that bit of oval conduit to get in there. So this is one of the flats. There's loads of flats in the there EICRs. Is, yeah. you're, you're going around and you're finding some issues with the green and yellow conductor next yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. So you went to a, a tenant in flat this time. Um, and as I pulled the consumer unit off, obviously I'd to undertake my testing process. I noticed the earthing conductor was just rested up against the earth bar. Okay, so, so, so our, our main incoming source of earth from the supply yeah. authority is just resting against the earth bar? Yeah. Wow, did that and, bring up any results issues? No, so again, you know, as, as an electrician, you always think, I wonder what the result's <laughs> going to be. Let's just have a look. Mark, Marcus has come along, he's going to say it's not very good. The reading shot, tested it absolutely fine. Um, but again, that doesn't make it safe, does it? No. From an electrician's point of view, we know that it should be terminated correctly. Um, the, the board does need changing part of the ICR. There's no RCD protecting it. It's on a ground floor flat, so there is use of sockets outside, etc. cetera. Um, th lots of different issues in terms of the board, yeah. um, but we just re-terminated it while we was there. That was what I was going to ask yes. you. So we're not going to just write it down no. and report it back on the report for the no. sake of just undoing a screen. Yeah, it's probably, more, it's probably more work. Yeah. Um, considering I've removed that to do, undertake my external worth loop impedance anyway it is yeah it's probably more work to to write up on a certificate and code it accordingly yeah. and then quote for it than it is just to sort it while you was there so yeah so sticking with green and yellow conductors yeah. okay so then we're probably looking at maybe the protective bonding conductor mm -hmm. and you've gone over to that and eventually you found it now some of the flats you've been working i just want to just highlight here yeah. Uh, are quite busy with stuff that the customer owns. They are, yeah. Okay. And, and as an electrician, we all have to make that decision sometimes where actually we can't undertake any ICR just due to not being able to access things safely. Yeah. You know, we have to think about our safety as well. We are going to be doing live testing um, to some extent. We are going to be inside of a consumer unit. Sometimes you have to make that decision and say, well, actually, my safety comes into it as yeah. well. Um, we can not We can maybe just do a visual inspection, a quick visual inspection, yeah. um, like I did in this one. Um, yeah, which I could see the board um, didn't have any RCD protection. It's similar to the other flats. They're all yeah. the same age. They've got the same sort of install. So yeah, it's, it's generally going to be that. Oh, and we can't refuse to work in a property necessarily just because we don't like the decor or maybe no, other no, no. person's living. So there yeah. is sometimes that challenging and then photographs showed how challenging yeah. it was to get to different aspects. Yeah. We said we're on the green and yellow conductor, we're at, we're at the bonding stage. You've measured the protective bonding conductor and yeah. you've got a super high reading. Yeah, so, right? so basically I had a bonding conductor inside the consumer unit um, come into the earth bar. I then disconnected that with obviously the installation off tested it to the, the local pipe work, yeah. okay, which was under the sink, so I could see the bonding connection, tested it to the to the pipe work, and it was like 20 odd ohms. Oh, right, okay, yeah. that's a bit high. We yeah. were expecting something 0.05 or yeah. below. It, it was only six mil, but even so, you would still, yeah. even with a six millimeter squared um, conductor, you'd still expect it to be massively low. The distance, I would imagine, the consumer, it was in the kitchen, the distance would have been no more than probably a few meters. So, right. so you would expect it to maybe note that on the paperwork that because it's been turned into a PME system, it's not necessarily adequate in terms of the yep. rules for a PME being yep. 10 millimeter squared for bonding. However, the reading was acceptable. It's not always a necessity to change that to 10 millimeter squared. So. But the problem is I'm still seeing it, especially on social media, yeah. actually people going out there in almost brand new installations when I'm yeah. looking at them, that suggests almost brand new installations, and they're yeah. still bonding the, the gas and the water. Yeah. I know there's a big debate that um, I think the gas uh, authorities expect it to be bonded when, yeah. for, for connection to new installations. I keep hearing that words yeah, yeah. that effect coming back. Mm. But as electricians, we're probably thinking the bonding's got a really high reading, but we're yeah. going to further investigate. And did you do that while you were there? Yeah, exactly. So on any ICR, electrical installation condition report, we know that we now have a code FI. So further investigation required without delay. Okay, that means you can't give a satisfactory certificate. Now, part of our job doing any ICR is we don't necessarily want to do fault finding stuff while we're there. That's not the idea. We're not there to, to fix all their problems straight away. If we can, great. While we're doing the job, if it's an easy fix, then 100% I would always advise that. Builds good customer relations as well yeah. because you fix something while they're there. Well, I could have failed on this, but because it was in the back, I just did this while, while I was there. Yeah. So, but. In certain terms, you can't do that. You need to say, we need to come back and we need to, to have a couple of hours at this because it could be no continuity on a ring final circuit. Yeah. Okay, so little things like that. Well, with this, what I thought I did, would do was, well, I've got a quote for this work anyway. So I'll have a little look about just while I'm in the property and I'm, I'm testing anyway um, and, and sort of do a little bit of further investigation. Now, more, I was thinking for my quote. So actually I'm looking, am I gonna have to get bonding in? Am I gonna have to replace the bonding conductor? Etc. Now, what actually turned out to be, as you can see on, on camera now, is we have a massive insulated section coming into the property, so it doesn't actually require the bonding necessary. Um, 
So in terms of that, the bonding conductor can just be disconnected. Now, so. Yeah, and, that, and that's one yeah. that, again, as you go through that learning process, the Guilds and EAL, they expect you to bond the shortest piece of pipe on yeah. every endpoint assessment you end up doing, and you never take into consideration where it's coming in plastic. When you yeah. go out there into the real world, you're in the field, every new property you're going to come into is... It, it's you, generally plastic, isn't it? Well, you're, ne you're never going to get one, are you? No, you're never going to get a metal one. Yeah. So bonding isn't required, but there is a, a tendency for maybe the electricians you're working with to still be cutting and pasting into that mindset is that I have, have to, to bond. bond it. Yeah, yeah, okay. And we'll perhaps do a separate video on why we do bond and why we won't need yeah. to bond. Uh, but again, that will link into some stuff on ADS. So th that's that property, we're in there, and yeah. then you're moving around doing lots of other stuff. Okay? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. as we we mentioned bonding, it brings me to showers maybe. <laughs> yeah. And you've gone to a shower that's been newly installed, a couple of three weeks. Yeah, uh, two weeks. Two fact. weeks, yeah. okay, and there's already an issue. Yeah, so basically had a phone call on a Sunday, um, basically from a customer saying, and their first words with me was, I need a rewire. I've been given your number by someone you work with. Um, I want you to come and rewire my house. And I was like, oh, slow down. Like, I'm, obviously I'm, I run a business. My aim is to, is to make money, of course. But I said, why do you need a rewire? And they said, well, shower's not working. Builder's been round. Um, and he said, it looks like you need a rewire. I said, okay, so these are your options. I can come and quote for a rewire, happy to do that. However, just off of the sake of a shower not working, yeah. doesn't say to me, rewire, 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 okay? So I said, how about we do an electrical installation condition report so we can ascertain the safety of your installation. Yeah. And just for the sake of paying for that, it could save you thousands because you might not need a rewire, or it could just lead to the same result, which you're happy to do anyway, which is a rewire. So, but until you have that done, you're not gonna know and you could save a lot of money. So. Yeah. Actually went and did a um, installation condition report there, and yeah, turned out it didn't need a rewire. Okay, so the insulation resistances were fine across the board, um, no major issues with that. We did find issues, obviously, like you do on the electrical insulation condition report, where the house probably hasn't had one for years and years and years. The consumer unit being very, very old, first time I've actually seen one of them, right. um, old mem shield one, um, where you don't have access to the the overcurrent protection devices, and they they were re rewirable fuses to BS three hundred three six. Lack of but, RCDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the you had to physically take off the consumer unit cover to access them. So the customer physically has to take them off the cover off to do that. Um, yeah, but there was other issues there. But in the end, end up saving a, saving them thousands of pounds um, from having a rewire to actually just bringing it up to regulations and doing the necessary requirements for the remedial work. So. Um, and when you look at that shower, they haven't even mm. fitted the cover correctly on it. Have no, they? I mean it's it's like poorly fitted. So it's in yeah. the bathroom. It's full of water. We can we can talk about how water goes through those sort of um, yeah. accessories, but. Let's just say it wasn't very well installed. Was it RCD protected? No, it wasn't. So you had to add RCD, brand new... Yeah, there, there wasn't even supplementary bonded wow. in place. I know we, we have that that old caveat that we can have... There's certain instances we don't need an RCD, um, but there wasn't even supplementary bonded in place. And again, important things from an EICR point of view to look for that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, we're always quick to say... That leads an RCD, that leads an RCD, but there are other instances, I would always say a shower um, requires an RCD, yeah. um, you know, so yeah. just yeah. for the effectiveness of the supplementary bonding and stuff, um, especially when the sockets haven't got an RCD, you know you're going to be changing the board, so it's one of them, isn't it? So. And again, that's a, a, a good example to me there. It's like you go and get a new car and yeah. you've just bought a new van, which looks pretty, uh, pretty <laughs> good. van. I've got used to now saying on site, I'm just going to go to the truck. Now. Yeah, okay, I'm going to okay. go to the truck. I'm yeah. still calling it a van. It's a pickup truck. Okay, so let's call it. So you got yourself a new pickup truck, which I think was a, a star in Die Hard 4. And we will, once you've finished it, we'll go and have a dive yeah. into that. Not necessarily in this video, but we'll do it in another mm -hmm. video. But when you went and buy a, a new vehicle, you would like to have the latest MOT. Yeah, if you haven't got an MOT, you yeah. want to get an MOT before you start parting with any money. Yeah. Electrical installation is exactly the same. Of course, it? It you, is, know, yeah. you haven't had an MOT on your house for 15 years, yeah. the likelihood is it's going to need something before you start interfering with it. With, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and again, it was it was more the, the customer was, oh, I need a rewire, I need a rewire, and I just said, look, just let me come in and do a, a report, and then we'll go from there and we'll see what's needed. So, like you said, with the shower, you've got the gullies down the back. Um, yeah. It actually turned out that they didn't want that shower installed. They actually wanted a different style one, um, so they wanted me to replace it anyway. That was part of the original. They had it two weeks, actually. Yeah, yeah they've had, they had it two weeks. I mean, it stopped working. Um, yeah, so it wasn't great at all. And, and again, you can just see from like all this, the silicon and stuff around it. Um, again, that voids the manufacturer's warranty sometimes and stuff like that. So, 
So yeah, and the, not, not just that, it wasn't just the shower. So obviously we concentrated on the shower as part of the ICR because that was the one that wasn't working. Yep. Again, it goes down to the sampling size, the reason for it. Um, we noticed there was little things like the sockets were a little worn. Um, and yeah, they, they was a little worn. So you can see from the picture here, uh, a ZS test that I did on the socket, it come at massive numbers. And no matter how much I wiggled it in the front of the socket, it was just an old socket, it was worn. So just well, needed yeah, so, a new front. So as we're, we're plugging in and we've got a well, worn socket with a really high impedance, yeah. there's a there's a chance ADS is not going to occur if there's a fault there. Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, that's, and again, that's big, you know, it's, it's like, it's like the old car, the yeah. tyres are shot, it needs mm -hmm. a new this, that, and when was the last time the cam belt was changed, etc. Yeah. Your wiring system being exactly the same. We're sticking with green and yellow conductors. You also found a nice uh, nice one in the back of some lighting accessories. Yeah, did were they, you? Were they, they were there, were they, the green and yellow yeah, conductors? Yes, so part of electrical insulation condition report is a visual inspection as well, and this is where it's important, like I spoke about in the other video, that you ascertain the, the, the amount of the insulation you're going to be looking at. Yeah. It, took off the, the front lights, which you could see there's no sleeving on the, the CBC. Not Again, the, not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. I'm more of a fan of, I'll do it there and then. Yep. I'll just grab a bit of uh, sleeving from, from the truck, not the van, from the truck, um, and then just, just make it good while I'm there. Um, it was plastic accessory anyway, so it's not, you know, it is probably an improvement recommended to the customer of yeah. C3, but to save my admin time on the paperwork, um, yeah, I, I did it while I was there, but you can just notice that it looks like in the past it's caused a bang. Um, yeah, the, the, the end looks black. The end looks black, yeah. So <laughs> so maybe that was when it was floating mm. around, so it needed uh, perhaps to be secured in the back yeah. of the box, yeah, in, and it's sleeving on. So yeah, that's that's good. Now, you've done a bit of fault finding as well this week. Uh, yes. Back on the yeah. back of these things, people bring you up and, you know, a couple of lights aren't working or a light time working in a bathroom and yeah. that. And there's a great tendency to do too much, isn't there? You of course fly in and you start taking your every light fittings down and all the rest of it. Yeah, and that's the beauty of fault finding, isn't it? It's, it's very much you take past experiences and, and you almost have to go in there trying to think as logical as possible. So, it, like you said, it's easy to go in, just rip everything down, disconnect everything, re-terminate it, and it still goes bang, and you're like, oh, where do I go from here? So, previous electrician had been in there. Um, they put it down to the extractor fan, which was broken anyway. Okay. Um, they The customer did have issues with it intermittently tripping every time the extractor fan come on. So they just went in there, put that on, um, replaced the extractor. Didn't didn't help the issue. I think this was a retired electrician, um, so it was a friend of theirs. Um, said, I think you need to call somebody in now who, who can go through the system, etc. Um, so they call yours truly. Um, I, I went in there basically, had a look at it talk to the customer. Again, it's very important fault finding you talk to the customer. Yeah. When was it happening? Why did it, because sometimes, and I always say to them, I say, I'm, I'm not the police, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna, you know, sue you over this. I'm not gonna take you to court. The The simple fact is, if you've done something, yeah. the quicker I find it, the less money it costs you. How many times you've been in and the customer's left a vital piece of information yeah. out like, <laughs> They changed the light fitting yeah. in another bedroom. Now mm. the lights aren't working. Well, we won't mention that because we think I've done a fantastic yeah. job, and, mm. and it, yeah, it yeah, comes all the way around. I've done. No, yeah. nothing I've done apart yeah. from I've done all this work yeah. this weekend and now the lights don't work. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the, you got this issue. So, what, where did you end up finding yourself in the in roof space and things yeah, like that? Yeah. So, um, it's um, on the top floor bathroom. Yep. It was the down light. So I thought. Well, I'm going to go before I start pulling the down lights down, etc. I'm going can to always be tricky, can't you? Always bring more. Yeah, and, and it was with these. Actually, when we did in the end have to to pull one out, um, it did crack the plaster around it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that had to be filled in Another and, and, and made good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but first of all, I went into the loft space, was just having a look around, seen a junction box, right, or okay. a joint, shall we say, not yeah, a junction so, box. So, a joint. so there was no box, was there? No, no box. <laughs> So some joints. Yeah. So again, didn't necessarily think it was down to that right. um, because obviously with the, we, the whoever did it, had used Wagos. Um, I, I, I didn't necessarily think, oh, it's a poor termination as such. Right, I okay. just thought it was a bit. It was a bit messy, as you can see uh, on the picture on the screen. So what I did is I, I just traced the switching line and neutral, um, which went off to the downlights. Yeah. And I just disconnected that first because part of fault finding is logically breaking down a circuit in the easiest way possible. If I could remove that cable for them four lights, which 
again, it's sort of things they say every time they switch on the, the bathroom lights is when it trips. So straight right. away I'm thinking it's to do with the bathroom lights. So I disconnect that conductor. Just just one there on disconnecting yeah. conductors. We've had this on another little video you've done for me, a little yeah. tiny short video where you say, and you remove the uh, CPC sleeve and where they've twisted conductors. Do you know yeah, yeah. I think your words are in the 80s, 80s anymore. 80s anymore. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I might have been uh, taught to put two, not twist them, but put two, two in one, one. piece yeah, of sleeve. Yeah, it's common, isn't it? It's, yeah. yeah, because you think if it becomes disconnected, the circuit is continuous. Yeah. I wouldn't do it now ever, yeah. and obviously you're very uh, impressionable when you're, you're training. Yeah. But this is where that would be an absolute disaster because you're going to have to untwist everything if you're trying to segregate in circuits off. A hundred percent because it was the RCD trip and therefore we know we have a fault to work yeah. in the circuit and therefore we need to be able to remove them conductors completely. So, so I'll remove um, the, the cable that was coming into this joint for that and then re-energize the circuit. Circuit stayed on. Naturally, I then switched the switch because we had the switching line coming up from the switch to that junction box first. Didn't go directly to the light, to the light, to the light. Okay, it yeah. all come, obviously it was an old free plate yeah. system. Into that mess, yeah. Yeah, so I turned that on, no tripping still. So I thought, okay, here we go. Now I've, I've broke the circuit down. We now know that this conductor here, this cable is causing the issue. Um, so straight away I just thought, what we'll do now, we'll logically, we'll break, there's only four down lights, we'll break them in half, we'll yeah. see which side work, then we can break it in half again, etc. So I pulled the light down, Caused a bit of cracking, um, disconnected it so there was only two in circuit, went and reconnected the cable I took out, the yep. switching line and the neutral, turned the circuit on, first two lights come on. I thought straight away, again you're thinking, so it's definitely between these ones now, yep. so I broke it down even further. So now we've got the three, have we? The three yep. and the four on? Yeah. Are they all on? Well, what I did before that is actually, I said to Eric, um, we, love, uh, we love a bit of Eric, don't we? So yep. I said to Eric, what we're gonna do quickly is we're just gonna reconnect it all, into back into the the way it goes and just before we start pulling all these downs because they down they're quite awkward and they were right in the eaves as well so they're very hard to do the work from above always this um, way isn't didn't it? want to do it a friday at half five so <laughs> definitely didn't um so what we did is reconnect them turn the circuit on absolutely fine no issues with tripping yeah so i hadn't actually you haven't found a fault you've solved a fault yeah i've solved a fault by not necessarily knowing it was to do with that that set of junctions. So, so that um, absolute wiring mess that you, yeah. you you interfered with, yeah. you've now made it so the fault has gone away. This little yeah, and, and you on. can see from the picture it's poorly yeah. terminated. You know, is it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> so then I thought, okay. So what we'll do is we'll do a bit of quick bit of insulation resistance testing just to be sure that it's not going to be an intermittent fault now yeah. um, or anything like that. Intermittent faults are very horrible because you can test it for insulation resistance. It's fine. Yeah hour later, customer rings and said, oh, you said it was fine and it's gone again. Um, so, but yeah, just did a bit of testing just to prove it. Redid the junction, um, re-terminated all the cables again into a, a nice new Wago box, um, right. one of the large ones, because um, there was quite a few cables there. Yeah, was. Um, and that sometimes the large ones help when there's not enough slack on one, because they're they're a bit wider than the smaller ones, you still <laughs> manage to get it in, you're like, yes, <laughs> result on a Friday, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, it just turned out to be that. Um, and that insulation resistance test would have been live conductors together to the protective yes. conductor, because obviously you didn't want to get all yeah. them loads in yeah, the excess light and, and uh, Again, like you have this felt, and sometimes you feel bad charging the customer because you think, well, I didn't necessarily, you almost feel like you haven't found a fault. Well, have, because it's working now. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. without almost doing it some with testing. Sometimes you can do it with testing, you can physically see what the issue was. Yeah. But, um, but they're paying for your skills. That's what yeah, I mean. yeah, of course you, you, yeah. You, you've found, well, if you've done, you've found the fault. You, yeah. You've obviously, that box that was a mess yeah. has now got in a proper Wago box. Yeah. So we, we hopefully yeah, solved that. Yeah, and again, just, you know, just tips for everyone really is, when, while I was there, when I was up there, I noticed the, where they changed the fan, um, a friend of obviously them who was a retired electrician, they hadn't screwed it down yet as an inline fan, they hadn't screwed it down, there was no duct into it yet because they were trying to find the fault, so yeah. while I was up there, I redid all the ducting, replaced it with new ducting that they already had, yeah. screwed it down, because what I say is, what I have a minimum charge which covers me for the first hour, then it's an hourly rate after that, so if I finish sometimes in 20 minutes, sometimes it's nice to go, but I always say, you know, You've got me for an hour. Wow! If you, if you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always like wow. that. I like to be fair. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I sometimes say, um, look, you've got me for an hour. If there's any other little bits you want me to do, again, I didn't ask them. I just did it. I just said, do you want me to do that while I'm up here? And they said, oh, if you could, that'd be amazing. And then, then it all went from all of a sudden. Oh, we, we've got this, this, this yeah. guy here coming in. He's charging us this much money to find it. He's found it in 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, to oh, he did this for us as well. And he did. Oh, yeah, he was a lovely guy. 
people up. Yeah. Well, Jerry's out on that one, mate. Yeah. <laughs> He's a lovely guy. I like yeah. the way you picked yourself in on that. Mm. Talking of lovely guys, um, as we'll finish it off, Eric's been out doing a bit of chasing this week, hasn't yeah. he? Um, you've got him a, a, a nice electric chaser, haven't yeah. you? To make that job easier. It yeah, looks... to be fair, it's only a cheap one, but it does the job for us. You know, um, we'll it... move on to to better equipment eventually if we need it, but in terms of the amount of chasing, rewires aren't our, what we specialise in. We don't do loads of them. Yeah. Um, but we, we do do them, don't get me wrong, but yeah, we don't do, we're not like, you see these companies that only do rewires. Yeah. You know, they would have them, them better ones, but it does the job for us and it... Was it fully working this week? No, the vacuum packed up. <laughs> So <laughs> when he's doing it, I was like, that's not, not as I envisaged the dust going yeah, anywhere. Yeah. So it's, Look, it's an empty property anyway. Um, there's loads of building work going on. Um, but yeah, the vacuum packed up. Um, I don't know what's gone wrong with it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm an electrician. I'm not going to fix the vacuum. I'm going to go buy a new one. I, I, um, like, I like the way you videoed him rather than stopping him. Though. That was yeah, nice. Yeah, you yeah, said, yeah. I'll video this for gas. Yeah, and then yeah. we'll, we'll mention the vacuum's packed yeah. up for him. So there's loads of dust, but you can see he's got full PPI on. He's got a nice um, dust mask, not just a necessarily real cheap one. Yeah. He's got gloves on. He's got all his boots, PPE, work trousers, etc. So, yeah, and it's the first time he's used sort of... Uh, I've been pretty strict with him. Because uh, when he first school, you know, yeah, yeah when, when he first started coming with me, he um, straight away got on the impact driver <laughs> and he was smashing boxes <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. Like he was putting it and he just rounding every screw off where he's in an angle and he's fully going for it like. Rrr! So I've been pretty strict with him and said, right, I'm taking them off you now. You're not allowed to use them. You're going back to using your basic hand tools because again, that's the beauty of work experience. We talk about it all the time. Yeah you get to know them. Sometimes we, we think they should be able to come in and just crack on with it and use all these tools, but actually he's never used a tool in his life. Um, so it was important for me to build up his, his wrist strength and things like that, you know, before he gets the, the easy thing. But his first time he used it, he was super nervous and excited um, at the same time, yeah, really. So Yeah. So, so that's it. So we had a little bit of a, a roundup there, yeah. mostly about EICRs. We've, we've yeah. put a little bit of fault finding in for everyone, and we've obviously brought the legend that is Eric, yeah. who will be come hopefully September. He's doing his um, endpoint assessment at level two at the minute. He's preparing for that. Yeah, he's preparing for that. A lot yeah. of people out there will also be preparing for their endpoint assessment. Make yeah. sure you do all the prep because obviously you've got that one crack at the exam on practical. Yeah. If you, uh, you're unsuccessful, you've got to wait a year. On your I think you have to wait a year. Yeah. 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 I think it's. I think it's the theory. You get a free. You get another go. Yeah, you get yeah. you get two attempts at that to yeah. improve your grade. I yeah. think it's a different exam, but you yeah. get to improve your game grade. So that, that's what we normally talk about on a Sunday. Obviously, we've had no yeah. sausage and bacon. Oh, we didn't talk about time. David. Let's bring a picture of David into David. David, the best looking like electrician we've ever seen. He, well, I don't don't tell him that, but he's like a brother to me. Um, I actually taught him, didn't I? Um, and he started his journey. Um, yeah, we're 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 like we're really good friends. So and he he rings me up on a daily basis, Did and he was showing he head, was showing me new his new head torch, um, which now he's appeared in a video on GSH. I hope he purchases <laughs> me one. Um, and you better do, David. <laughs> David, you got to get right to the end of this video. I've got a funny feeling you'll probably never know you were in it. <laughs> we might end up. We'll see how this goes. If we, if, we, if anyone's left some positive feedback for us, that'd be yeah. great. Or if they've given some uh, topics they want us to talk about, we can. But we'd like to perhaps do a few more of these. So yeah, just have a little roundup chat about. Maybe what yeah. you've been doing in the week yeah. and see where that can uh, maybe help someone. That polystyrene was obviously a real issue. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, and it's important to look in the on-site guide because there's it's not just polystyrene, there's lots of other materials. Yeah, back yeah. in the day, do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> you can't even buy, buy it now. It now you can yeah. get Crea coat, and yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. know if it has the same properties. No, because uh, <coughs> that to look smelled brilliantly that. back in the day oh, when I was I a kid. It. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I remember, I always remember once, you probably won't want me to say this in video, my mum and her husband had an argument um, and he had just planted, planted loads of roses for her. Did he, he water, them with, <laughs> water them with a little bit of creosote? Yeah, he I did. I imagine yeah. they didn't do very well. <laughs> <laughs> on that bombshell, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next video and maybe we'll do a few more of these. Cheers, mate.